Well, good evening. Great to see all of you out here. It's always fun the longer the Lord leads me somewhere to see different faces that come through that are still in the same family, as well as see those ones that I remember when they were in elementary and now they're in high school and making these kinds of plans. So it's a joy to see them growing up to serve the Lord, and we're glad that you as parents continue to trust us to offer them an education in the truth because we recognize how important that is. And as part of that, I really want to encourage you as you're looking at those CCP courses to look at opportunities at Christian universities. And we have several that have courses here on campus. You'll hear more about that in the next um, spiel, but also over the next coming years, we continue to try to make that more robust because we really think it's important that our students get the same biblical worldview that they're getting at school in their CCP classes as well. So it's just a great evening. I'm going to open in prayer and then introduce uh, Mrs. Bailey and we'll get started. So let's pray together. Father, what a great opportunity you give us to uh, rear children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We're thankful for that privilege. And we just pray as we partner with these parents that we continue to accomplish the task that you have to help each young man and each young lady grow up to be a, someone that can impact the world for Christ. So, Lord, just pray you bless this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't have many public meetings, or we haven't in a long time, so be sure you meet Mrs. Marshock. She's the 7th through 12th grade principal now. In case you were looking for Mr. Kenori, who is now the campus pastor, and it's great having him doing that full time. And so if you see him on campus, thank him for the hard work he's doing. He's already met with a lot of pastors. He runs chapels on Wednesday, chapels on Friday, and also now has several Bible studies going on campus that the students have initiated, that he's encouraged them. So I appreciate the fact that we're able to have a full-time campus pastor and grateful for Mrs. Marshock stepping in as our secondary principal. So I'm going to turn the evening over to Mrs. Bailey, our secondary counselor, school counselor, and allow her to share with you. And since I don't have a student that needs CCP+, Plus, and I really have heard this before, I'm going to slip out. So, okay, so Mrs. Good evening, as we, um, Mrs. Bailey, secondary school counselor, and you won't see her around the corner, the lovely lady, Mrs. Marshall, um, is my guidance assistant, and uh, she keeps things running, and I appreciate her help. She's new this year, but you, when you walk into our office, she's usually the first per person to greet you, because I'm often a little back farther, so. There is a lot of information, so we're all going to go through this together, <laughs> and I will be very um, monitoring time to be respectful of time because it's been a long day, <laughs> right? Um, and there's a lot of information that we go through, but it's important. So some stuff I might go through a little faster because in your um, CCP reference guide that you got when you came in, um, a lot of that information, all, all the information I'm going over is in there because I wanna spend most of our time just kind of walking through the process. Um, this is my fourth year here at Lake Center. And what I've noticed, most of the questions are confusion of the process. Um, for those of you, that if any of you came from a public school, CCP is much, much different, the process in a public school than it is in a private school. Um, you can thank ODE for that. Um, we have a little more hoops, actually you have a little more hoops to jump through than a public school does. So we're gonna kinda go walk through that. And I see a lot of students, I'm gonna applaud them because good job guys, because part of being CCP ready is to participate in the CCP meeting. Because a lot of the times we just have parents and we don't, the students usually aren't present. So good job guys. So just an overview exactly what is College Credit Plus. It's what it says, you can get dual credit, so you get high school credit, and you can get college credit at the same time. Um, and some of the CCP classes you take, depending on what they are, can actually go towards some of the class requirements you have for graduation in high school. 
Um, so three college credits equals one high school credit. And we're gonna kind of talk about how that looks on a transcript, but that's how it's broken down. Um, so three plus, meaning if it's three college credits or four college credits or five, it still equals one high school credit. Um, students so apply through state funding. That's how CCP is free, is through the state funding. That's why it's important to come to the meeting to know that process. But you can also self-pay um, and still do CCP. Um, the big one is students need to take the ACT to get scores for college application deadlines. Now, some of the colleges have different things because we're still in kind of some COVID things, but it is really important. ACT, um, for those students that are graduating, which most of you are graduating with the new graduation requirements, you're so welcome. If you do not know what those are, you need to come see me right away um, because they're going to seals. So parents will, I will be putting out information just a reminder. And one of the seals you can get is a college ready seal. That's if you meet benchmarks on the ACT. So for college credit plus, if you've never taken the ACT, if you've already taken the ACT, you're okay if you met the benchmarks. If you've never taken the ACT before, you need to take it by December 11th, and that is coming up real soon. I am so sorry. ACT is cut back on sometimes, and unfortunately that deadline is <laughs> November 5th, which is next week. Um, you can do late deadline, but then ACT so lovingly ups the price for late deadline. So, so. Think about this week kind of registering for that. Um, and I, in your packet was a sheet about ACT and how to go to the website and register. And if you ever have questions, you can email or call or stop by and visit me and we'll, we can kind of walk through that. So you can take CCP here at our school. We're gonna talk about what cl CCP classes we offer. Um, I'm so glad, so I'm not gonna say Miss Gwen is from Malone. Um, I'm not gonna say her last name because I, I don't wanna butcher it. And she said, that was okay. She go, she's like, I'm used to that, I go by Miss Gwen. She is actually um, representing Malone because we take CCP here at L at our school through Malone. And so she, you can talk to her afterwards and get some more information. So what she said is the testing the ACT if it's kind of waived at Malone. Um, you could also take the AccuPlacer at Malone also if you don't meet that ACT and you can, um, I'm gonna get information. Ezra, Ezra Catch, his name does not look like it's spelled. He is, does CCP at Malone. He's wonderful, has so much information. He's actually putting a, together a video for parents and students um, to kind of go through the, how that process at Malone works for CCP. And so um, as soon as he gets that to me, I will post that on our website. So for ACT, the eligibility um, threshold. So for English, you have to have an 18, reading a 22, math a 22. And then some schools do the consider ranges. So if you get 16 through 17 on English, they may still consider you okay to take CCP. I put the SAT, because you can take the SAT also um, to meet those if you would rather do that. Most, most colleges and schools around here do the ACT. So, um, but some students, some of you took, just took the PSAT. Unfortunately, that doesn't count because that's a practice test for the SAT. Um, but you, you can take in the SAT also. So that conditional adjunct, what happens if I don't meet those benchmarks, if one of the schools requires me to take, and I don't meet them? So they do have consideration. So as she said, if you have a 3.0, 3 point GPA, and sometimes they'll ask, like they will talk to me as a school counselor, and I recommend, like if I feel that this student is quite capable to do it, you know, we all know sometimes, sometimes tests can be overwhelming standardized test and sometimes we know it, but we just don't do well on a standardized test, but in school we do fine. So they do have considerations for that. Ultimately, the college has the final decision on whether they're accepted or not. Um, there's different ways to, 
earn college credit. Um, you can do CCP at a college. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. You can do it here at our school. But we also have advanced placement courses here. Now, CCP funding does not cover advanced placement, but it's just, we, we like to put that in there because it's another way to get college credit. So at the end of um, taking the course, so we have um, calculus at our school and AP English. Um, you guys will take, those of you that are in it, you're gonna take a test with me at the end of the year. And usually if you score three or four, colleges sometimes accept that as a college credit. So you have to sc score a certain um, number on that test. And I don't have all the college, some colleges accept it, some don't, it just kind of depends. But you can get college credit for advanced pl placement classes. So all these are all the courses. This is in your refrigerator sheet, I'm gonna grab it. So this lovely sheet is called the refrigerator sheet. It, you can put it on your refrigerator. It has, I would keep this for a very long time, put it in a file, because if a student takes a class here, you're gonna be asked this information when you fill out college, when you, anything. A lot of this information, they wanna know the score. So some of the, the CCP classes through Malone that we have here is um, English Composition and Literature in, in Society. They, we also do personal finance, which is a graduation requirement, um, world history. We also do CCP through Cedarville, and those two courses are general psychology and principles of biology. So Malone courses are actually taught by teachers here. They're like a dual professor through Malone. They actually teach the class at our school. Cedarville, we have a teacher facilitator, which means they're in the classroom just kind of help monitoring students. But those courses are actually done online. But because there's a lot of group work in it, we set it up in a classroom so students that are in that class can work together in a group. Cedarville um, has professors that teach that online. And so we're all in a classroom. It makes it kind of easier. Um, and we'll talk about the deadlines in a minute. So hold on this, put it on your fridge. Um, also on the back, you'll see who's responsible for what in the CC process, because sometimes that's confusing. So you can kind of look at that at your own time. And some of the eight, you'll see the AP classes. We have calculus. We actually have computer science principles in AP English 11. Whoops. So this is what Dr. Beeson was talking about, the biblical worldview, and why does that matter? Well, courses and programs at Lake Center are designed with the Bible as the final authority of faith and life, and students are taught truth in his creation. When you do CCP outside of the Christian, so if you do it at Akron Kent, you're going to get a lot more stuff and not biblical, not a lot of biblical perspective. You're welcome to do that. So according to... Um, what we have here, ACSI, who we just got our accreditation done, they actually require that any student that does classes outside of our school need to meet with a campus pastor to get some biblical integration. So if you take classes like at Akron, then I put you on a fun spreadsheet, and you and Mr. Kenori, meet, you guys meet as a group, and you just have a great discussion. What are you learning at college? Well, how can we fit kind of biblical perspective and some of the stuff you might be struggling in because it's, it's coming from a totally different, it's coming from a worldview and not a biblical worldview. So just keep that in mind that if you do it online or off-campus, non-Christian college classes, um, but I would really encourage you to just take the opportunity of the ones that we have here at our school. And also, um, Mount Vernon Nazarene College also does CCP classes. And so I will put links up for so you can get information because they do some online too, as does Malone. So any classes at Cedarville and Malone have online courses. You can go to their Malone. You can actually go on campus and take other classes other than the ones we have offered here. So one of the things that I'm very passionate about is being college ready. So sometimes when we see that um, we all this get like this, it's free money. Like we get very excited, right? When we can do something for free, it's exciting. I get excited about it. But sometimes students are not college ready. 
So what makes a student college ready? We call them those self words, um, self-discipline, self-direction, self-awareness, self-confidence, and self-advocacy. So are they simple things? Are you guys turning in your homework on time? Are you able to do like assignments independently um, or as a group? Because sometimes in college you do a lot of group projects. Um, do you need your parents to like help, like walk you through every every little thing? Are you able, like that's what I said, are you able to do these things kind of on your own with their just a little bit of their guidance or a little bit of my guidance? Um, and how does your student, are they doing in, in class? Are they getting very overwhelmed um, in high school? Um, so those are kind of things you need to think about, like am I college ready to take college level classes? And you need to think about that when you take college level classes, especially if you're taking them off campus, that sometimes your student, is, your high school student is in a classroom with upperclassmen in college. Okay, so there's that too. There's, so there's a lot of things to kind of think about. And other things are, it's college level classes. They're, the tests are gonna be fewer, but they're gonna cover a whole lot more material than in high school. Um, study time is gonna double. So it can be two to three hours of homework for every hour spent in class. So that can mean three to five hours a day. So those of you that um, aren't real happy with the homework, um, college level classes have homework too and it's more. Um, so, and sometimes the coursework, as I talked about, more independent thinking, um, longer writing assignments, and sometimes a lot of out of, like, you have to do your own research, which you guys do here. I will say, like, Lake Center classes do prepare you for college, for CCP. And also the thing, little things that sometimes we don't think about is attendance. So you're splitting your attendance sometime if you're taking off campus or online classes at two different places. So some of our deadlines for like dropping and adding classes are different than Malone's. So if you take a CCP class here that's through Malone, you don't pay attention to the deadlines I give you. You gotta make sure you know the deadlines for Malone, okay? Because there's more hefty weight for dropping a CCP class outside those deadlines than there is a high school course. So those are kind of things to think about. And parents, you're gonna serve more as a mentor, kind of helping guide them. Um, and your student's gonna be, you want them to be more of an independent thinker. And we talked about this, like benefits of CCP is you can get high school and college credit at the same time. Kind of get a little bit of a head start or a feel on college and some of career paths that you wanna take. Um, just understanding college better. Um, you can save on tuition and books. Um, some of the, some of the um, risk of participation, it, it is a challenging process. And most of the responsibility is put on parents and students. Um, but the good news is that we're, uh, we're here to help in that process. Um, you can take up to 30 hours of funding can be requested. I'm gonna let you know there's at no point in time did any student get 30 hours. <laughs> um, so how they do that, how they give you CCP funding is they give like three hours to all the seniors and they just come down seniors all the way down to sometimes we have seventh graders taking, C not here, but seventh graders can take CCP classes. Um, and then if they have hours left over, they'll go up through again. So really, it depends on the year, and once those hours are gone, you cannot like talk to <laughs> Ohio Department of Education to get more. Like that's they that's done. They you got the hours you got, and then we kind of work through backwards through. Well, we asked for six, and but we signed up for you know eight credit hours of classes, and then we can kind of walk through what, some different changes we can make. Um, any student can apply. Um, so when you want to take CCP classes, you have to apply to each school you're taking CCP classes. So if you are taking classes here, that's through Cedarville and Malone. If you're taking, a, you have to apply to Cedarville students and you have to apply to Malone. If you're taking and you're doing some Akron or Kent classes, you gotta apply to those schools also, all right? 
I'm not going to kind of talk about the first 15 rule in level two. That's actually in your packet. You can kind of look over it. Um, I'm kind of going to spend time kind of going through that. But there are kind of rules about you must complete 15 credits in certain classes. And most students reach that. And the wonderful thing about um, going through CCP, if you're going through schools, is they have admission counselors and stuff that know these things too. And they're so helpful, like walking you through and telling you what you can take and not take also. And these are just some of the things that you can take. It's pretty much all the things you would think of, computer science, anatomy, and physiology. You can do a foreign language. Um, some students have taken like ASL at Kent um, to get a third language in because we only have the first two at our high school. Um, but some of, the, some of the courses that aren't allowed are um, no PE courses. <laughs> No, no PE courses. They do not accept religion or Bible courses um, unless it's like a religion or Bible course that talks about all religion. Um, courses that have high fees, study abroad courses, um, pass-fail courses, religious or remedial courses, those are not allowed. And like I said, your, the mission, college admission counselors know this very well, and they will let you know you can't take that for CCP. So we're going to kind of go through the deadlines. And so it usually takes five weeks after you apply for the state to get that funding back. And we're going to kind of go through that here later on. As I said, funds sometimes are limited. And they're, they're based on seniors first, then juniors, then sophomores, then freshmen. So usually seniors get more hours than a freshman would. Um, just some things like when you're going through paperwork, what does these options B and A mean? Um, option B state is for state fund for college course and when student just wants to use for just college courses, um, option B is usually the de default. So if you're doing college credit plus and you want to get the college course and the high school credit, you're gonna do option B. Option A is for those students that want to either just count it towards college or just high school or self-pay. You're going to do option A. And under option A, you must work directly with the college to make payment options. So if you're doing self-pay, you, you can't contact me because I'm not going to know that information. You need to contact the college. And they will kind of work through how much that class will cost. I will say... That Malone has a great, you know, for our students, CCP students, they do have like a reduced kind of, would that be correct? Like a reduced fund for that. So say you didn't get all the hours, but you really want to take this class, there's that option that you can self-pay for that class. Um, one of the other things is if you are taking online or off-campus courses, this doesn't apply for courses that we have here at our school. So you're taking, you're going to Kent and you're taking a class. Um, we, we need information to help pay for books. And that is usually a little Google survey. Mrs. Ryan kind of handles that for us. And you need to give that information. So those surveys are usually due in May for summer courses. So we'll talk about that. When you get CCP funding, so say you get it that in May, you can start taking a summer CCP class. So that CCP funding can be used for summer classes, fall classes, and spring classes. And so we have different times in the year that we need you to fill out that information so that Linda knows who, where to order the books, what book you need for that particular class. Because if you get CCP funding, those books are free but she has to know how to get them ordered. And I usually remind students and parents, like we send those out and I'm like, hey, if you're taking off campus classes, you need to fill this out. So you need to have like the course name and number and things like that. And any students are always notified when those books are available and usually Mrs. Ryan um, just tells them to come to her office. Her, if students, so her office is like this hallway right here um, Mrs. Grimm is at the end, and then hers is the second one up. 
so you'll kind of see it's next to uh, Mr. Fisher's office, the maintenance office is where her office is. And at the end of the semester, when, those, when you're done with the class, then you can turn those books either into me or you can just drop them off in Mrs. Ryan's office. So this is where it gets kind of tricky with um, the transcripts. You guys should know what transcripts are because some of you are requesting to kind of see them. So this kind of looks at what a college credit looks like and how that is equal to a high school credit. And we kind of talked about that. So like a one credit high school CCP, one credit college credit equals a .33 high school credit. And then it kind of goes down. This is all in your, is in your um, packet. Another thing to think about is when you're a senior and you're requesting your transcript to be sent or you've taken classes outside of our school. When you look at your transcript, it will only show high school credit. It will not show college credit. So if you want to go to a college and you want, like, say, your English class to be counted towards, maybe you have to take an English class in one of the colleges and you're like, I already took it. I got pretty good grade. You will need then to go, because if you did English through Malone, you will need, then need to call Malone and ask them to send your college transcript to that school. Does that make sense? And sometimes we forget about, and the students can come down at any time their senior year, like, and I just kind of remind them. Because it's a lot of stuff to remember when you're a senior, right? There's a lot of stuff coming at you. But that is how transcripts work. Um, so grades, um, CC will be factored into high school and college GPAs, just to let you know that. Um, Off-campus CCP grades, they do, I don't know why it says it, they do appear on your, um, for, for high school credit, their grade will appear, but it does, uh, can affect your GPA depending on how well you do. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes it happens, you get into a, a class and you don't do so well. And I'm not gonna go through all of it, that is actually also in the back of the handbook about how probation happens. I will say that that has not been an issue so far. Um, but if you ha get a less than a 2.0 GPA in CCP courses, or withdraw from two or more courses in one academic year, you can be placed on CCP probation. And there's a process that you can, you know, request that that be reviewed. But usually, and if you, and if a student, this is where it comes. If a student fails a CCP course, oh, <laughs> they require you to pay back those credit hours and the textbooks. So there's a little more weight, parents, in the. So yes, it is free. But if your student, that's why it's so important to kind of know your student and know if they're college ready because sometimes you will have to, you will have to pay back things. And this, some of the consequences are, and we talked about that, they may require to reboost tuition and the state will ask you to pay back. They, they want their money back. And then that grade is permanently on a student's transcript. And I don't say this to scare you because most students do really well, but it's just, other things to kind of weigh in your decision. And I'm gonna kind of, all this is through, is in there, the CC probation and how that works and the dismissal. So take some time to kind of read through that and understand it. I'm not gonna take a lot of time kind of going over that. Believe me. For those of you that play a sport, you need to remember about, you know, your eligibility and things like that for sports and kind of what, um, what they, their requirements are. And know that summer term CCP courses cannot be used to bring a student in compliance for that, all right. But it counts towards like when you guys, remember you guys have to have five classes or five credits for CCP classes, we do count those towards that. Um, but you need to kind of understand what they have. So I wanna take more time talking about walking through this process step by step. So the first thing is the eligibility and we kinda, there's different ways. So that is that ACT by December 11th 
Um, you can do the Accuplacer. You need to, at any school that you, like Malone, so you want to do Malone, you don't really want to have time to do the ACT or there's not enough time, you can contact Malone and see what when they do the Accuplacer. Um, and you can also, so the SAT is December 4th and their registration is November 4th. So there's different ways that you can do it. And I will say with the ACT, it's always good to, to get in that practice. I, I don't think is any problem taking the ACT multiple times because what I notice is that students improve year, usually year by year their, their improvement. And I know some students like get really scared when all they're like, Mrs. Bailey, are all the ACTs on the bottom of their transcripts? Like the college is gonna see when I did a really bad one. You know what? The college is also gonna see how you improved. And they do look at that. So don't be scared about that. <laughs> So that's December. That's like the, the big thing to remember is that December 1 is the first deadline to meet for CCP. The second one is from like December and February is we got to turn some things in to um, Mrs. Marshall and I. Hold on a minute. This lovely yellow sheet on the back of your, your thing. This is just our participation notification saying that you and your student are going to um, be okay with all those things, like I'm interested in taking CCP, I went to the, all, the, all that fun stuff, and you're gonna sign it, parents and students. But this is what the most important thing is. Even if you took CCP last year, so some parents are gonna see this online tomorrow, even if you took CCP last year, you still gotta turn in this yellow form because we need to know where to send your transcripts. We have to send transcripts to every school that students apply for CCP for. And we have, we have ways, I have, as we have spreadsheets with Malone that we put those in and it's just an easy way for us to kind of keep track of that. We have the same thing with Cedarville. So students with Cedarville, um, Stephen Boutel is the person I work with for CCP. You will get emails. This is why checking your emails is really important because we ran into issues with this lab this year. Check your emails because he's going to kind of walk you through some things you need to do to kind of continue signing up for courses at Cedarville, even the ones here. But this gets turned in. We just made it easy. February 14th, it's Valentine's Day. So just think of love in the yellow form. I wish we could, we should need to make this red because then, you know. So this is kind of one of the things you need to do. Also, during December, January, and February, Think about, apl start applying to colleges. Like if you know you wanna take CCP, do some research of what, like if you wanna take some things outside of our school, or you wanna take more classes at Malone than the ones we offer here, start kind of thinking about that and asking questions and talking to admissions about that. So you kind of have an idea and, and start applying, because that's when you kind of do that. I will say if you're doing off-campus classes, that becomes a little bit of a scheduling kind of fun. So I will say CCP fits in juniors and senior schedules better than anyone else's. Does that mean you can't take it in? No, that doesn't mean you can't take CCP classes in sophomore. It might mean, it might mean you, you can't take all the things you wanna take if you wanna try to get that in your schedule or you can try like an online class in the summer or an online class at another school and your freshman schedule is usually pretty, pretty hard to get CCP in. Um, I know students have taken like little tiny ones um, in the summer, so that's an option for freshmen, um, but it's really, really hard. Freshman schedule is pretty packed to get that in. And I will say for off-campus classes, it works better in a senior schedule than anywhere else. Um, because you, you've usually taken more classes and your senior has a little more room because what we have to do is schedule either if you're gonna do off campus, I gotta think about, we gotta think about when the schools offer those classes and how we can kind of manipulate your schedule to do like, say you wanna do afternoon CCP classes off campus. So we gotta fit your, all your courses in in the morning so that you can leave for CCP after. And that is like a lot of conversation. It's not, I talked to my mission and I signed up and now I'm gonna tell you Mrs. Bailey. Because then it's kind of like this conversation we all have to have and it takes a little bit of 
sometimes a lot of conversations about how that will work. And so just communicate that with me. I'm so happy to work with you in that. In scheduling, it's worked for a lot of students. I mean, we just got to all be communicating that. Um, as my mother-in-law says, communication is a fine art. So that's kind of, so December, it's the ACT. Um, January, February, start doing some research. Um, if you're doing, if you want to do anything that we don't offer here, kind of start looking at that. If you know you're, you want to take classes here, CCP classes on art, you start applying to those schools. Um, I will say I'm working on a very easy website because I know sometimes parents getting into Canvas to see my stuff is, is a little difficult sometimes. So I'm trying to do a website. I'm getting that up. Um, hopefully I will get that out next week to you. And it's so easy. It's just push buttons. You just hit a button and it takes you right to where you need to go. And so I'm going to put Malone's right. If you hit Malone, apply to Malone, it's going to go right to Malone's page for where you need to apply in Cedarville also. So I'm trying to make it a little easier so those th you're not looking around. Um, it'll also have, we're going to talk about the ODE and signing up for um, what you need to do there. And there'll be a button for that too. Um, February, March, that's kind of what's going on. So February 1st through April 1st is where you have to sign up for your Ohio ID. This is how you get your funding. Now, if you have had a student previously that took CCP, you do not need to reapply to your Ohio ID. You're just going to use the same one and add your student to it. If you don't have a student and this is the first time you're applying for CCP, then you need to sign up. And all that information is going to be on the website when I send it out. It's also in your packet. Um, the Ohio ID needs to be done but April 1st before 5 p.m. They do not have, they do not like extend that deadline. It's a hard deadline. I will say the sooner that you do it, the better. The longer you wait, the site gets very, very busy and slow and sometimes crashes, especially April 1st. It, it happens a lot. Um, so on that website, um, I'm going to have a link. They do a great job of having like a booklet that walks you through each little window and what you need to put in it. Um, you're also going to, they have a participation form that you have to like digitally sign for them. This is where once you get accepted to your college, the college is going to send you, congratulations, you've been accepted. You're going to upload that letter into the Ohio ID. They, they need that uploaded. Um, I also will have access um, if you, there's ways, numbers you put in and it'll show you what, that links you to Lake Center and then I can see everyone's applications and everyone's um, state funding letter. Now, Malone, I usually send the state funding letter, I download that. Um, Cedarville usually asks and you and students can just send that to Stephen. Butel. Um, sometimes they forget and I just send it to them because too. So other schools, if you do offline, online or off campus schools, they're going to ask for that letter. So you might want to make some copies of it after you get it because sometimes you have to. I don't need a copy of it unless some reason, because it's happened in the past that they didn't the Ohio IDs didn't link to me and the students aren't on there and sometimes I just ask did you get a funding letter? And like, yeah. I'm like, can you just give me a copy of it so that I don't mark you that you're self-paying? So that's like the big thing. So usually um, April 1st is the end of that. Usually five weeks later, so in May, you should get a funding letter saying how many hours you got. And then what I do with that is I put it on a big spreadsheet and I look at what the classes, students' classes, if they requested CCP classes at our school and parents have communicated what classes they're taking online or off campus. Um, I look at all the credits to make sure that you're kind of in your, your funding. So here's the thing about the funding and the hours. So say you got six hours of funding and you've taken classes but you don't have, you have like, le like one leftover CCP funding hour. 
and you want to take a three-hour, a three-credit college class, that poor little one cannot go towards the three-hour. That's not how that works. Um, it makes it very confusing. It's like that one little credit is just kind of left there unless you can find a one-credit college class. Um, you can't use, like, leftover credits. This is what I tell parents. So it's really important to kind of work through in your head kind of the classes you want and how many hours. And I always tell parents it's always better to ask for more hours. Doesn't mean you're going to get them, but it's always best to ask for more than you think you need. So then you might get some, some of them than to ask for less. And Does that make sense? So say you wanted to take English here and lit, lit in society here. One's first semester, one's second semester. That would be six credit college credit hours. You would request six. I would say it wouldn't hurt to request three more on top of it. Because the reality is you might not get it, but then you might. And it doesn't, you're not going to get penalized for hours you don't use. But it's always kind of nice to have that cushion. So that's what all this is down here is all the, that's why we call it a refrigerator sheet because there's all the deadlines. And I will do, I usually do a pretty good job of trying, Mandy, and I will try to remind you, send out an email, try to remind students like, hey, this deadline's coming up just to kind of remind you of that. So I, I'm not going to go through, but that's kind of the process of CCP. I know it's a lot and you're probably going to be like, I'm not going to remember this. It's okay. I tell students I have a memory of a goldfish. And I have to write a lot of things down, and sometimes I have to ask a lot of questions before it kind of sinks in my brain, because this is a lot of stuff. Um, this is, I will have this where you can go to um, the ODE and get information on non-public, it's what we call private school non-public CCP, and some questions. They have videos and other information. I will put that link on my website also. And then there's just my information. Um, if you need to contact me or ask any questions, because it, it, it's a lot of stuff. So that, I'm going to kind of just pray for us and, and end the evening so that we can relax. You can come in if you have any questions, um, something you want to know. Come talk to me tonight. You can shoot me an email. You can set up, we can set up a meeting later to ask questions. Because that's, as you're looking through stuff and going through the process, there's always questions. Right now it was a lot. You might not have so many right now, and that's okay. I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these parents and students, and it, this is a lot of stuff, so I just pray for wisdom for all of them as they kind of think about what they want to do and the plans that you have for them. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask for safe travel back home tonight. I thank you all for each one of these parents and students, and just thank you for this time we had together. In Jesus' name, amen.